Here today, we're going to be doing a turkey season recap. So we've hunted all season, we made some awesome videos about it, but in this episode, we're actually going to give you guys behind the scenes. We have the beards right here. We're going to be measuring them. We're going to go into detail over this turkey season. Like, we're going to give you guys the detail that you didn't get in the videos. So if you guys like turkey hunting, or you just like sitting and watching us talk, you're about to have a good time. But anyways, let's start off. Kentucky, that's where we are. What do you think about it? What do you think about Kentucky's turkey season as a as a whole as a whole? It's, it's way too late. Really? Yeah. When uh, does it start? It started for us the 18th of April, which ain't terribly late. But once it progresses later on, it's late. As in late, I mean the hens are already on their nest, kind of like settling down. Because so that that means the gobblers ain't really moving what they should be. Yeah. So our turkey season, I think, in Kentucky is three weeks, right? Mm -hmm. All right, it's three weeks. And uh, this actually brings some up because down in Tennessee, our neighbor from down below, they actually start a week earlier than Kentucky, and they end a week later than Kentucky. In Kentucky, we can kill two toms. In Tennessee, you can kill three. What's up with that, Kentucky? What's up with that? Why, 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 can't, why can't we have a longer season? And that's why I actually bought Tennessee tags this year. We'll talk about that here in a minute. But, I mean, I guess first things first, let's talk about how did we prepare for the season? Was we prepared at all? Was you prepared for the season at all? No. Me neither. I mean, I had a little bit of an idea of what I was doing. I had some spots picked out. But like I said in the videos, my main spot I was wanting to go to, I know there's turkeys there because I seen a ton of them back in hunting season, back in deer season. And they probably seen it if they watch my deer hunting videos. Or y'all probably seen it if you've seen my deer hunting videos. But... I'm, I've seen a lot of turkeys at this place. Like, it's where I ended up killing my buck, and there's like 30 turkeys up there. There's like 30 turkeys, and I saw them all at once in hunting season. Well, that was my plan to go up there, because obviously there's a lot of turkeys there. Well, I went up there, and I seen them being a corn pop, okay? The corn pops, if you don't know, is pretty much illegal pretty much everywhere to hunt turkeys over. So, that was illegal. Some, some I'm not, I don't know who... But it wasn't me, and I was planning on going in there, but once I went in there to scout and I saw that, I just had to bail. I didn't go there anymore. That's the picture you sent me, wasn't it? Probably. Just, uh, yeah, it was so close. Man, it was right in the it was right in the spot. I mean, it was right where I was wanting to hunt, which apparently someone else was wanting to hunt there too, and a lot worse than me. And to be honest, I kept track of that location because it's not it's not hard to, and uh, I don't I don't know if he even hunted it at all. So. Wasted spot. That's all I'm saying. But then I had to find a new location. But luckily, I had a, I had a decent, I had a decent idea of where I could go kill turkeys. Definitely not near my house because there just wasn't any turkeys. But I don't know. I went pretty far out. Thirty minutes is far for me. But I went out there and ended up getting one. And then one of them I actually did get decently close. But uh, how did your turkey season start? Did you buy any new turkey guns this year in preparation for it? I mean, I did, but I pulled it out maybe about an hour because, I mean, I didn't even hunt that much this year because, sadly, this year it was getting late. Like I said, turkey season came in late, and we just started remodeling our house. So what I wasn't turkey hunting, which I only went about three times, and I, I really didn't hunt hard this year, and I was just worried about getting trying to get the house done because we got some other things coming up and it has to be done a certain time frame. So it's like, hey, got to rush, get this thing done. And mine just kind of went, eh, and I didn't really worry about it. But we still got the fall one. So everything will be done by then. We'll actually kind of try to, I'll actually hunt hard this fall and get a couple birds on the ground. Yeah, and that was kind of ironic because uh, I do believe Ethan said he was going to tag out the first weekend. And didn't even go the first weekend. I know. Kind of. I was waiting to see two two turkeys. I didn't see any. Your house and family will come first, uh, especially when you live with just your mom and a little brother. Yeah. <laughs> Priorities. Yeah. It sucks, but it is what it is. The original plan was to do something where we would do a cheap versus expensive turkey hunting thing where I'd take a cheap shotgun, cheap shells, all that good stuff, cheap calls, and Ethan would take expensive gun, expensive calls, expensive everything else, 
and we both go out and kill a turkey. And uh, I killed mine pretty quick. And then Ethan never got to really go hunting. So that's why you guys saw a Walmart video where I used a cheap gun from Walmart. That was actually supposed to be a cheap versus expensive, but I had to modify it into what we could get out of it. But um, yeah, as for the first turkey I killed, though, I actually killed it on... So season started that Saturday. I actually killed my first one, I think that Monday. So like three days later. The first day, I went with some other people. Um, I, did, I wasn't really hunting. We got close. We didn't kill anything. But we did. I did go hunting with them. Kind of as a cameraman. Didn't really do anything. Didn't really kill anything. Day two was Sunday. It, there was church that day, so I just kind of got up and walked around outside, and I didn't hear any gobbles, so I just didn't really hunt that hard. And then day three, it was raining a little bit, and I didn't hunt the morning, and I was like, wait a second, it's raining. I know exactly where they're going to be when it rains, because whenever it rains, turkeys like to get out in the open. They like to get out in fields. They like to get out in just open spaces, out from under the trees because what happens is when it rains as you guys know when it rains it gets foggy when it gets foggy you can't see okay and turkeys that all they can do is see okay like they can't smell they can hear good but they can't hear when there's when there's a, a bunch of sounds hitting the leaves from like the rain and stuff so what they do is whenever it's raining whenever it's foggy they go out in the fields for a couple reasons. The main reason is so that they can actually use their sense of sight a little bit better. Because if it's foggy in the forest, it's kind of sketchy and the turkeys know that. So they get out in the field where they can see a little bit better. Plus, it's not as loud out in the fields. And then another reason they like the fields is because if it did rain and they are wet, after it stops raining, they can go out in the fields and they dry off. Because that's where the sun's going to be able to hit them. So yeah, I kind of knew where they were going to be. So it just got done raining. I went out there just kind of walking around a bank. And, uh, yeah, I mean, I just saw one at, the, at a distance, probably 200 yards. And then I was like, oh, yeah, I seen him. I backed up a little bit to where he couldn't see me because it was like this big hill. And I was just walking a little bit. Then I'd see him. Then I backed up and got in a tree. I called, like, once and just sit still. I couldn't see, like, 20 yards in front of me. But that was okay, because I knew that if he was going to come through here, he couldn't see me until he was 20 yards away either. And he got right into me. I could hear him spitting and drumming, which uh, kind of let me know exactly where he was, before, even though he didn't gobble at all. So this is important, guys. Just because you call and they don't gobble, that does not mean that they do not hear you. And that does not, remain, and that, does not mean that they did not respond to you. They just did not verbally respond to you. So he responded to me. He came right to me. He just didn't gobble and didn't come sprinting at me, but he just, he heard me and he just, I just sit there for like 15 minutes and then I didn't call again at all. And then I heard him spitting and drumming and then I just got ready. Next thing I know, I see him. He comes out. I shoot him and he died instantly. Yeah. That's how it works. Yeah, that's how it works. I do feel like a lot of people like to call too much. Like if oh, they yeah. would, if they would, if they would have done what I'd done, like, in the situation, I feel like I feel like a lot of people would have called to him, sit down. Maybe 30 seconds later, maybe they'd call it again. Then maybe a minute later, they'd call it again. And just because he didn't gobble, they would expect maybe they don't hear him. But they can actually hear pretty good. And especially if they're in a decent distance. Like, they know what they're listening for, and they can hear pretty good. And they know where it's coming from, because that's how they survive. So... That's where a lot of people mess up. I definitely think it is because what I was told, or at least one good strategy with calling, I don't this probably this is definitely probably not the only strategy, but this is a strategy that all the old people say is the best. So I just take the word for it because they probably figured it out over their lifetime. But they're like, you kinda wanna call once and not much at all. And like, if he gobbles, alright, just don't call again because a good strategy is to pretend that you're a hen that does not hear him because if you yell and he gobbles and then you yelp again then he gobbles then you yelp again he gobbles y'all have pretty much communicated that you know where each other is and in nature the hen goes to the gobbler anyway okay so if you guys effectively communicate then he's going to expect that you're going to come to him like it does nine out of ten times in the real world, world anyhow. 
But if you yell, he gobbles and you don't yell back, then maybe a minute later he'll gobble again and you still don't respond. Then he'll gobble again. You still don't respond. He's like, oh, well, she she can't hear me. Maybe she went in a hole. Or maybe another Tom's got to her. So he's going to come over here because he's not really sure what happens and he wants to figure it out. And so that's generally what I've always done. And I killed two out of two turkeys only calling one time. I'll tell you another thing where a lot of people mess up. It's calling too loud. Yeah. Because, I mean... If you're calling really loud and he can hear that, he's going to think you're a lot closer than what you are. And obviously he knows what hens are around. So you're really wanting him to think that you're a hen over here somewhere to make him come check that one out. Because he don't know. But if you're calling really, really loud, he's going to, oh, that's just a hen that's already near me. He yeah. knows what's up. Yeah. Um, so that first that first one, or maybe the second one, whichever one you want to call it, um, I called him in, he didn't gobble. Okay. So the second, the second one, or the first one, whichever one. See, here's the problem, guys. It's kind of confusing because I posted, I posted one video first, and that was actually the second turkey I killed. And the first turkey I killed of the season was actually the second video I posted. So it can get kind of confusing. If y'all seen the videos, you know what I'm talking about, though. Anyways, the second turkey I killed, it was kind of late in the day. I took my buddy out hunting. I was trying to get him one. I'd already got one. I was like, that's awesome. I'm going to try to get him one. Well, we went out. We didn't do good at all. We heard one. We heard a few gobbles, but he had to leave early because he had to go back to school. So I, I took him. I took him back to home, and he went on to school. And so I was like, "It's still the day's still kind of young." It was like ten, which is young enough. And so I was like, "I'm going to go out hunting. I know a spot over there that might have a turkey, maybe." Well, I went over there, and I was hunting around that ridge. We're in Kentucky, so we're in a lot of mountains. Not much flat stuff at all. Well, I was up on top of the ridge, okay? And I was hunting around, and I wasn't hearing anything. But I was hearing something. And it was way across the mountain. It was across the holler. Which, if you know how hollers work, that's kind of a long way, okay? And honestly, I thought it was Kanye, which is my pet turkey. But then I heard Kanye, and I was like, well, Kanye's over there. That well, over there must be an actual turkey. So then I kept listening, and he gobbled again. I was like, well, dang. That turkey is that turkey's ready for rock and roll. But then I was like, but that turkey's half a mile away, and um, that's a long way. So I hunted around a little bit more, blew the crow call. That's another thing we'll talk about. I blew the crow call a little bit, nothing really responded. But every time I blow the crow call, he would respond every time to a crow call, which is like 10.30 in the middle of the day. So... Finally, I was like, all right, you know what? He's, he's being responsive. I think I can probably get him closed. Because here's what thing: He was actually on my neighbor's property. Or kind of my neighbor's property, but the property that was the neighbor of where I was hunting. So I couldn't really go up to him and kill him. But I was like, you know what? I'm going to give it a shot. I'm going to go over there to like that property line and try to call him across. So I walked over there. Ever so often, I would if I, if I lost him, which I didn't actually... I knew, I knew, kind of knew exactly where he was, so I went over to him. I yelped once. I yelped, well, one little segment, whatever. Yelp, 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 yelp. One session sequence. He gobbled back. I was like, okay, this is probably all I needed it, but I didn't have the camera on, so I went ahead and got set up. I was like, I'm in a pretty good spot. What's going to happen is I was on the ridge, and then the mountain kind of went down, and I knew he was down here, so I sat right up here to where. I could not see him until he got right up on the ridge, and then I'd shoot him straight away. So I wouldn't see him until he was 20 yards away or less, just like the other turkeys. So I kind of set up thick, set up really short range to where I couldn't see far, I couldn't shoot far, but he couldn't see far either. So he had to come check it out and had to get right up in range before he could tell anything. And I wasn't using decoys or anything. So, But anyways, I got set up in close range, just kind of got him in behind a tree, kind of. And then I called again, and then he gobbled again. And right there, I was like, all right, I'm completely done, because now I'm in my, I'm set up in my spot. And so if he wants to come on, he can come on. Well, well let's say the first, the second time I, I yelled, he was straight from him. Well, then about a few minutes later, he was over here. And so I was like, okay. That's fine. I don't care. Because he still knows where I am. Whether he comes straight at me or comes around a little bit, 
I should be fine. As long as I keep my eyes open, I shouldn't have any problem with that. So I just didn't call again. Then next thing I know, I think he gobbled again right in front of me again. And I just staying quiet because I didn't need to yell. I didn't need to call because he knew where I was. And he was letting me know in, unintentionally that he was getting closer. Okay, He was thinking he was going to keep gobbling so that maybe I could meet him halfway. But I didn't. And so he was like, well, maybe there's another Tom. Up there. Maybe a Jake's up there with her. I'm going to go kick his butt. So he just kept on coming. He didn't see me coming to him. I wasn't responding to him. He was getting a little antsy. He was getting impatient. He came right up up there. Then whenever he got over the bridge, he looked to where the hen was supposed to be. And he didn't see him. So he's like, okay, I'm out. So he turned around. He started walking. Boom. But then it's too late, dude. He got shot in the back of the head. I think, I think if he went down the hill, I could have probably called him a little bit more. He may have came back up maybe or even scratched in the leaves and he maybe came back up. But I didn't want to wait. I just shot him and it worked out pretty perfectly. Both of these turkeys, I didn't see very much more than just their head whenever I shot them. Like I knew they were the top because of their really red head. But I didn't really see their entire body. And neither one of them was strutting when I seen them, which I think is fine. I'm just trying to kill a turkey. I don't want to do a big strutting thing, but that is the shotgun I was using, by the way. It's a Fran Franke. It's a 20 gauge, and I put a nice little red dot on it, and it works out pretty nice. It worked out really nice. It's lightweight. That's what I like about it. I know I've talked a lot. Do you have anything to say? No. I mean, he didn't even hunt this year, so it's pretty much just a. It's pretty much just me talking because he didn't even hunt. I mean. Bought a shotgun. That's about it. Yeah. Which one? A Beretta A400 String Plus. Did you take it out at all? Yeah, for like an hour. And I was like, I'm going to save this for duck season. <laughs> so this is like a one-man show. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> I did end up with a very nice shotgun, though. That's good. I killed one turkey with that, which is a really kind of expensive rig, but then also killed the other one with a $200 Hatfield shotgun with like a $1.25 shell, which means anybody can do it and a cheap pack of calls on Amazon. Here's what I was going to say about the crow call, though. I think some of y'all might benefit from this, okay? So whenever you have an active turkey, right, he's willing to gobble, okay? He'll gobble, he'll gobble every time you call. But here's the thing, guys. I don't think it's I don't think it's a good idea to call out a turkey unless you're at your final destination, as in where you want to set up. So if you're calling if you're calling with a with a hen, if you're yelping at him and he's two he's three hundred yards away and he gobbles back and then you move a little bit more and you don't know where he is and you call again. I don't like that strategy because I agree with that. Because he's going he's he's also tracking you. And once again, if you're getting closer to him and you keep yelping, he's thinking you're coming to him because you are. So what I like to do, if possible, like for for example, this one turkey, he was gobbling hard. So he really wanted to gobble. He want he was looking for something to gobble at. I could have used my I could have yelped at him and he would have gobbled just the same. Except then he would say, Okay, there's a hen coming to me. But instead what I did do is I blew my crow call a little bit. And just because they shot gobble, they gobble at random things, loud noises. They gobble at whenever you like slam a car door, but whenever you slam a car door, that's not natural. So they could get tipped off if they start thinking too much. And it could just maybe, uh, I don't know, it's just unnatural. A crow call is natural. He's going to gobble at it, and he's not going to think anything of it because there's crows everywhere. So I was blowing the crow call to locate him, and then I didn't hit the actual hen call until I was in a position where I was ready for him to start coming to me. And I think that's something, I think, I think that's pretty important. If you can get them to, if you, if you can get them to gobble at a crow call, I believe it's much better to get them to gobble at a crow call than a hen call unless you're set up and kind of ready for him to come to you. And worst case scenario, you blow the, this is important actually. Worst case scenario for each, you hit the crow call, nothing gobbles. Everything in the woods just thinks it's a crow. Worst case scenario with the hen call, you yelp, nothing gobbles. 
you move a little bit, then there's a turkey right up on you that came to your call, but you didn't know he was coming. Had that happen before. Yeah, just like my first turkey where he didn't gobble at all, I just assumed there was a chance he came, which is a smart thing to do. Like, pretty much from all the old people I've talked to, they're like, anytime you want to hit that hen call, it's probably a good idea to just, wherever you hit the hen call, set up and just sit there for like 20 minutes. Because there's a pretty high chance that they just don't want to gobble, but they still want to come to the call. And if you blow the hen call and nothing gobbles, and you assume nothing heard you, you're, you could miss out pretty bad. And they'll walk right up on you, and you won't be ready for it. You may not even be set up, and then you just lost a turkey that was going to be easily killed. That's what I think. Oh, it is. It happens more than people would think. Yeah. Patience. Yeah, and just sit there. Just sit there a little bit long. Mm -hmm. Sit there. You know what? Maybe you maybe hit the end call, it gobbled, and then it just quit gobbling. Sometimes if it quits gobbling, that means it's making its way towards you. But maybe 30 minutes will tick by. 30 minutes is a long time. You really want to sit there? Well, if you're not hearing any more gobbles, and you heard a gobble. This also depends the time of day you're hunting, too. Yeah. Especially from, like, that daylight to about 9 o'clock. That's just going to really apply there. But if you're hunting, say, 9 o'clock to about 12 o'clock, you're probably not going to get them to gobble much anyways. So that this applies a lot to that and the times you're hunting. So like, yeah, what I'm thinking is like, if you're out there and maybe you heard a gobble, but he's not gobbled in a while. If you're not hearing gobbles anywhere else, just stay, just stay there. Just stay where you, where you yelped from. Because worst case scenario, nothing happens. Best case scenario, or actually worst case scenario, you get up and start running around the mountain looking for another turkey, and then a turkey actually comes to where you were. Okay. Mm -hmm. Best case scenario is even if they don't gobble and nothing's gobbling, you might kick one passing through. Because, I mean, if you... Turkeys, they... turkeys, here's something special with turkeys that you may not know. Unlike deer, pretty much every other animal, that like to run specific trails, and like deer trails, or... Uh, like game trails, and they pattern them pretty good. Like, you can almost pattern deer to where they walk the same trails every day. Turkeys, turkeys don't care about trails. They just go, they just go straight through the woods, and they'll take different paths every day. It doesn't really make too much sense, but maybe it does, because they are actually looking for food as they walk, so maybe it does make sense. So, you get, I mean, yeah, just don't call too much, and then just, just because you call doesn't, and nothing gobbles doesn't mean that they're not going to come, okay? Because they very well could. And they could come as soon as you get ready to leave. Because that actually happened to me, too. After I killed these two early, so I killed both of mine, and I was tagged out in Kentucky in the first five days. Which is, you know, that's pretty good and everything, but I did hunt all five days before I actually tagged out. But I do have the two beards here. I, let's go ahead and measure them. I don't know. Pull up the turkey of this one, if you get it. It's the one of, yeah, that one. It's this one. Okay, that was the first one I actually killed. You can see the beard, and uh, I took it out with the Hatfield shotgun. So not an expensive shotgun. I would, I didn't care what it was. I tell you right now, I don't care if it was a Jake or what. If it was a, if it was a boy, I was shooting it. His beard is actually nine inches long, which is longer than I thought, but pretty good. I mean, that ain't bad. That's a good one. Yeah, that's a good turkey. That's my second turkey ever. So keep that in mind. My first turkey gonna be hard to beat. That it has a collective of like twenty five inches of beard. It had four yeah. beards. Kind of re extremely rare, actually. But for a second turkey with one beard, I'm happy with that. Now, the second turkey, oh, and his spurs, I couldn't really tell how old he is, but I don't know. His spurs is seven, eight, six. He's, pro he's probably a two or three year old bird. Yeah, I don't know. I'm 21. Anyways, pull up my second bird. Not that one. That one's still the first. Oh, go back to that one, though. It was actually rainy, and that's why it's like foggy in all the pictures, and you could even see that he was wet, which is just kind of cool. Now switch it up to the second turkey. He's a, he was a big dude. Like whenever, uh, yeah, whenever I walked up on him, I was like, this, this guy's, this guy's big. 
I'm gonna measure. I'm gonna attempt to measure it. Not bad. An 11 inch beard. That's a good one. Yeah, I could tell he was. I could tell his body was a lot bigger. And then his spurs are actually pretty long too. They're like the, the hooks thing. They're an inch. I don't know. I don't know how much that matters though. Cause my chicken has like three inch spurs and he's a chicken. So Daryl's spurs, spurs yeah. are huge. Daryl is half fighting chicken and so he is like he is ready to throw down okay. at any moment. But still, yeah, his spurs are like double that. Yeah, they're huge. Daryl's spurs he's just a chicken, but his spurs are so much longer. Which Daryl don't really fight many people, so he doesn't wear he don't wear them down and stuff. That's pretty good. That's fine. Yeah. That turkey, man, I actually lost a camera in the woods that day because uh, it was just a long hike and I've not even went back to get it. I don't know if I will because it was such a long hike and it was so hard carrying that big old bird. And plus it was like 10, 30, 11 by the time I got done killing him and all that. So it was heating up. It was getting hot. It was a long hike. I was carrying a big old vest. It was wild. What camera did you lose? A Tacticam. Which is like, it goes right here. That's what I have zip ties on my gun for. I put the tactic camera right there, but I forgot to turn it on, so it didn't have any footage on it. It can stay out there. Yeah. They're not too good, honestly, in my opinion, anyways. With a remote, they're good. Or yeah. With phone. Yeah, they're not, they're not bad, but they're not user-friendly, in my opinion. No, unless you're using the remote or your phone, they're not. But back to... Uh, I was done in Kentucky, and I was like, I want to keep hunting turkeys, okay, because it was fun, and I didn't want to be done that soon. So I did take out my friends a few times, and uh, then I ended up not having anyone to take anymore because they wanted to sleep. He didn't take me, just to... You, you, never, you never went at all. No. You never even had time to go. No, I, I really didn't. But I took them out, and then they wanted to start sleeping towards the end of the season, so I was like, well, I'm still going to go hunt anyway. So I got me some tags in Tennessee. I ain't that far from Tennessee anyhow. I was like, I know what I'm going to do, okay? Every time you go fishing in the spring, you hear turkeys gobbling. Mm -hmm. So I decided to go fishing, fake fishing, to see if they would gobble, and then I was going to jump out and go try to kill them. Well, I went, and the boat broke. So we didn't actually get to go very far, and the turkeys didn't gobble either. So that was my first experience in Tennessee. And it didn't go. It didn't go over very well. That day was hilarious. What day? When the boat broke. Uh, it was probably about. Yeah, I randomly texted him and said, "What's up?" He said, "Boat broke." Yeah, it didn't. It didn't work. He said, "I'm gonna buy a new one." I said, "Why?" He said, "Too complicated." Yeah, I don't know. But um, anyways, that didn't work. So I never got to go back to the lake because the boat broke. So then I got up my boat. And he had some place in Tennessee. So we went after that Tennessee. We went in Tennessee. We tried a lot. And this was like big old fields, okay? Because we was, it was like hilly fields. And it is hard to hunt turkeys in fields. I don't know. They're just smarter. And you have, you have less leverage. But anyways, we, I think we went a total of three days to this spot and hunted hard for those three days. Every morning, we'd get really close to a turkey, and he'd hang up. Why would he hang up? Well, the first day, we was he was on the roost, and we started calling to him to kind of, you know, let him know where we was. And then two other hens started calling to him as well, and they went straight to him, which is what is supposed to happen, but it's hard for him to compete. It's hard for us to compete one fake hen with two real hens. So we kind of lost that battle. Nothing else really worked out for the rest of the day. We went back the second day. We got on a similar turkey. We actually called him. We called him in for sure, but we set up really thick. We set up really thick, really short to where we couldn't see him until he got right up in range. Well, he hung up right out of sight, so we couldn't see him. He was probably 30 yards away, but he was over on the other side of like this little piece of stuff trees and stuff so we couldn't see him okay and uh if we could have seen him we could have killed him but we didn't see him so you can't kill what you can't see well he was there but he just didn't come any closer um then we started walking around and we were doing really bad at being observant and we walked up on like five turkeys in different spots and it was just it's pretty bad um which is sad, we didn't kill one. But then day three, 
Let me see what happened on day three. I can't hardly remember. It wasn't that long ago. Um, I think we did. Oh, day three. Yeah, here we go. We we went up. We had two of them goblin. So we set up. We called, and they stopped. They stopped goblin. It was about twenty minutes later. He's like, "Well, what do we do? Do we do we stay or do we move on and try to get on them?" Because they went across. We they went. They left us. Right, they left us. They were they were gobbling. They were interested in us, and then just left. They quit gobbling and left. So he's like, "Well, I guess we'll go after them." We stood up, and they didn't they didn't go away from us. They were right up on top of us. But whenever we stood up, they flew away. <laughs> if we'd sit if we'd sit still for two more minutes, we'd killed two of them, one each. There we go, guys. Just because they ain't gobbling, don't mean they ain't coming towards you. And if you ain't got any better options, just sit still anyways because there's a chance they could be coming in from a far away or just naturally be passing through. Like worst case scenario when you're turkey hunting, you are not hearing anything. You're not hearing any gobbles. You don't know where to go. So what do you do? You go to the highest percentage spot you can and you just sit there because that's the only thing you can do. If you're not hearing gobbles, just go somewhere where you know turkeys like to eat. Maybe you know they like to pass through. Just sit down there and call a little bit. You might get lucky and they may come to the call. You might get lucky and they just decide to start passing through, moving through. Now, if you're sitting there for an hour and nothing's gobbled, and then hear one one gobbles, sure, you can go to him. But if nothing else is happening, just get in a good spot and sit down. Now you're now you're hunting deer. Now you're hunting turkey like deer, where you just sit in a high percentage spot and wait. You know what? I was actually talking to him about all the potential ways you could kill a turkey. So you can you can stalk them. That's where <clears throat> that's where you see a turkey and you sneak up on it and kill it. Alright, that's stalking a turkey. You can call in a turkey. This is this is one part of an ambush, okay? You can call it into an ambush. That's like throwing out food. And then well, that's like saying free candy and then kids come run. Yeah. Well, you're saying I'm a hen and the turkeys start running. That's one way you can ambush somebody. Well, you can ambush them by being in a high percentage area. You know, there's a path right here. Maybe maybe you know that they, they like to walk through this little general area. You set up and you wait for them to come through and you bust them. All right? You can bait them. That's illegal, but I'm just saying you could. That's a, that, is a, that is a way to kill a turkey. It's not legal, but you can do it. You throw out bait and they come to it and you boom them. You can bait them up to 30 days before season. Yeah, but that don't count. Another way you could do it, they call this reaping. Reaping is where you see a tom out there. You literally get like a fake tom and you just walk. You just like crawl towards it and they they think you're a turkey. And then you shoot them. A lot of times they'll run towards you. That is actually, an, <clears throat> that's actually a really effective technique. That would not be a bad idea for everyone to kind of have in their vest or at their disposal. Because if you're hunting anywhere where there is fields and there's one um, strutting out in the middle of the field, it's kind of unlikely that you're going to be able to call him in. But what you can do is set up that fake turkey strutting and kind of crawl to him and he will not think anything of it. He may even come to you to fight you, which then you got a really up close shot. But another way is trapping turkeys. Once again, this is this goes into the illegal category, but you can trap turkeys. That is an effective way to kill them. All right. Another way, I would say poison. All right, so you don't have to bait to poison. Again, this goes in the illegal category. I'm just thinking of ways you can kill a turkey. Okay. You can, uh, but you can poison them. Whether that be poison their food or poison their bedding area, which isn't really possible because it's in a tree. All right. Another one I was thinking of, you can... Uh, what about spotlight? Well, that would be... Um, you know, I thought about that. <laughs> Not necessarily out of trees, but like a long range, if you were to snipe them, I would still think that would be called an ambush. It'd just be a long range ambush. Because an ambush is like... When they're in a position and you you predict that they're going to that location for whatever reason and then get them when they don't know what's happening. 
I would say a long grain rifle. I would put that in the category of an ambush. See, that, the thing about that, it goes into <clears throat> illegal and legal. No. Because some states you can shoot with a rifle. Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. If it's, if it's legal, then sure, go at it. I mean, that's fine. Don't do it in Kentucky, though. Another way is um, chasing the turkey down. Now, things do this all the time. You can you can kill it. You can kill a lot of things by this. You chase it down and kill. It. I get knows you're there. You know it's there, and you're just chasing it until you catch it. They're fast though. <clears throat> they are, but are they? Can they run forever? No, but they can fly. That's why it's not effective. Yeah. <laughs> they just fly off on you. You're chasing down something like a chasing down something like a buffalo or a tortoise. That's, that's definitely doable. Yeah. Because, like, you can outrun them. They may be able to run faster than you, but humans are pretty good at endurance. Like, we can run for days. We can't run fast, but we can run for days. Or at least ancient humans did. We're all lazy now. What about chasing a tortoise? That would probably be easier. A little bit. I, I think we got a picture of chasing Kanye. All right. Oh. But uh, another effective technique, no, not effective, but one that you could actually maybe implement is walking. No, this isn't an effective technique, but it is a technique to kill a turkey. What you do is you just walk in the woods and by chance hope that you run into the animal you're hunting. So like you're just walking through a woods, you're walking through a path, boom, you look over, there just happens to be a turkey there. He's shocked at you, you're shocked at him. Then you just try to take the shot. That's an opportunity shot. It's not an effective technique. And chances are, even if you do get a shot off, it's a low percentage shot. In my 15 years of turkey hunting, that's only ever happened to me once. Yeah, it doesn't happen often. No. It does happen more often with squirrels. Okay. Or deer. <clears throat> that happens a lot with deer. <laughs> yeah. But with turkeys, with their keen eyesight and keen hearing and unbelievable awareness, it's a little more unlikely to happen. Which is understandable. That's why it's not an effective technique. Um, another one would be carpet bombing. Now, this is illegal and pretty much impractical, but if you want to kill a turkey, you could do it. You just bomb it. And that kind of branches off onto a... Uh, you could do burning, where you kind of... Night bomb? Yeah, like you burn down the forest. They could probably fly out, but they might suffocate if you get a big enough smoke circle around them. Or if you, like, or if you shoot... The tree that they're staying in, you might burn them too. So if you're lucky, you'll kill them with the burn. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. Like with uh, with squirrels, burning down the tree is a lot more effective because they can't fly. Now this is also illegal, but it's still it's still a possibility. Okay, I'm just putting out possibilities. Um, so yeah, get over it. But another one, I was thinking this. Okay, contracting. You you put up money and you just let someone else figure out their own method. Now, if you're just trying to kill a turkey, you're not necessarily going to kill it, but you're going to get killed. It's going to die. Right. And all you, what did you have to do to do it? Spend money. You spent money. You contracted someone to do it. It's an effective technique. Like if I wanted, if I was burned up, this again, this is illegal. I'm pretty sure. But if I was burned up to Get to make sure a turkey died. I could go on Facebook Marketplace or Craigslist. I could put out a... A bounty? Yeah, a, like a $100 bounty. First person to bring me a turkey gets $100. I would get a turkey very fast. That's an effective oh, yeah. technique. Another effective technique, falconry. Okay? Not necessarily falconry, but outsourcing to animals. Now, I would technically put this into the contracting because you're just having another person another animal do the job for you but if you had a really trained cougar you could probably tell it to go kill a turkey and it I imagine it's fully capable I would think so you could have a big hot an eagle if that's possible maybe it's only it's probably illegal but I'm sure that if you were good enough you could teach an eagle to go kill a turkey for you what other techniques am I not thinking of? What about an IED? Oh, I have an idea. An IED? I would kind of put that into traps. 
Yeah. Into that category. <clears throat> For a while, I thought that a- that the ambush tactic and calling tactic was different, but I do believe they are in the same category. Because if you call something in, you are getting him unexpectedly, and you are previously set up. It is pre premeditated, so I would call that an ambush. That's another way you could kill a turkey. You could kind of go bum rush it. Where you kind of just like have a bunch of people rush up on it, just start shooting at it. You can just run it over. That's a drive by. That's effective. That is a drive by. Whether you actually run it over or drive up on it, shoot it. Is it illegal? Is it legal? No. But do people do it? Actually, yes. Which is not good. But yeah, it's they illegal. do it. Yeah, they do it. They do it. What road hunting? I mean, like yeah, getting in a field and driving up to a turkey and their buddy shoots it off that rig. I imagine yeah, that's, that's pretty it. fun, but that is common. Yeah, and illegal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely. Don't advise it. No. I wouldn't do it, because I like, I like hunting them naturally. I like freedom, too. Yeah. But, uh, what's another effective technique of killing something? Or a turkey, we'll say turkey. You could, you could, uh, electrocute it. How would you electrocute it, though? Very powerful electric fence, run it through like their path, just hope they run into it. I would put that to the category of traffic. Yeah, that's awesome. I think that's about all the good methods that you have. It um, is. Speaking of this, though, do you like an alcohol? In the morning, yeah. Yeah. If y'all don't know an alcohol, so if it's uh, if it's before they r- get on the ground, which is like uh, decently daylight, whatever, you can blow an alcohol. And a lot of times they're looking, they just want to gobble in the morning. Or maybe they don't want to, maybe they just do. But if you blow an alcohol and there's one in the dip, in the vicinity, a lot of times he will gobble at it for no good reason. Okay? And it's a good way to locate a turkey so that you know where to start. Basically, you get there, maybe it's like 10 minutes after dark, after daylight, or 10 minutes before daylight, or seeing light, whatever you call that. Blow it. Look up your local owl's hoot pattern, like whatever it is. We have barn owls and barn owls, I think, and so below that, and they may they may gobble at you. Up in the day, you well, up in the day, um, owls don't hoot. So, They'll figure you out. Yeah, so owls don't hoot. That's unnatural. Try switching to a crow call. A lot of people say that crow calls don't work as good for shot goblin, but I believe the reason is because they're always using them in the middle of the day, and turkeys are just much less likely to gobble during the day in the first place. So, if you want a like a locator call to use in the middle of the day, get a peacock call. Well, that's one call. You can get a peacock, a crow. You can get a woodpecker. Yeah, the peacock and woodpecker work good for later in the day. Uh, Personal opinions, owl in the morning, when it gets daylight, crow's pretty good, and after that, it's peacock or uh, woodpecker works pretty good. Or if you just have a crow call, you can just use a crow call. I do like owl hooters, though, because I think they're cool. Yeah, you can use crow calls. It's better than peacock and later in the day. Why is that? It's more natural. Really? Usually. That's what I've been told. I don't, and it I don't, seemed to work. It seemed to work. I don't see how in the world anyone could come up with a peacock is more natural I, I don't in the mean, evening. I don't we mean, don't have peacocks in Kentucky. No, no, we don't. But I have no idea. Just seen two old guys do it. You know them. It worked real good, so I'm going to stick with that. Anyways, guys, we're going to go ahead and end this. Tell us what you think in the chat. Tell us what you thought in the comments if you're watching this after the live stream. But as for that... We're going to go ahead and end this and uh, tell us how, oh yeah, tell us how your turkey season went. Comment below and tell us your turkey stories. Peace out, fam. Bye. Hopefully we'll kill another turkey. Maybe. Bye.